truth is um, that there is truth in them, but they're not necessarily true. Let me explain what I mean. Uh, for a start, I want every person who's reading a story, one of my stories, whilst they're reading it, I want them to believe it's true, otherwise why turn the page? That's really important. So I have to believe they're true whilst I'm writing them. The truth is, they're all based on some kind of truth, some kind of reality. I'm not good at beginning in fantasy or working in fantasy. It's got to be something that I know, that I've read about, a place that I've been to, someone I've met. There has to be something true. And after that, I invent, but it has to start with a little truth. I think sometimes what fiction can do, what stories can do, is that they can make you feel historical things, real things, much more than a plain history book can. Because you get to know and you get to love the characters at the centre of it, and you care what happens to them in the circumstances in which they find themselves. Take Private Peace, for, for, for instance. I, I think that book, almost more than any other, um, it is true that there were over 300 soldiers shot in the First World War for cowardice or desertion. Two of them were shot for sleeping at their post. Um, I, didn't want about th I didn't want to write about 300 soldiers. I want to write about one. So I wrote the story of Private Peaceful, and it's a fictional story. But there is a base of solid, solid reality of the First World War there. So the answer is it's a mix. It's a mix of inventiveness and truth, and you hope at the end that the story has got as much truth in it as the reality, if not more. Well, the ideas in my books, it's quite simple, really. They come from all around me. I really invent very little. I look and I listen and I learn and I feel and I take in this world around me, extraordinary world, sad world, happy world that we live in. And I take things from it and I fill up my memory, my well of memory, with all these things. So I always find that there is something out there, something someone has told me, a story someone's told me, or a place that I've visited. And that's what I do. I just keep my eyes open and I keep my ears open. And most important of all, I keep my heart open to anything. Out of my 120, hand on heart, I would say I'm totally, totally pleased, happy, proud, whatever you want to call it, with about 10, 15. There's another 30 which I think are all right, but could have done better. And there are quite a few which I wrote when I first started that I really don't like reading out aloud now because I feel they're not well written enough or the characters aren't well enough developed and, and things like that. I've got my very firm favourites and ones that I don't say I'm ashamed of because everything is a process. You, you, you learn with every book that you either succeed at or you fail at. And failures are just as important as, as the successes. So 120, uh, what's the word? Um, good, bad or indifferent. I write on my bed. Um, I write on my bed because it's comfortable. I used to do what everyone else did. I'd sat at, sit at a desk um, and before there was a time, you wouldn't understand this, but there was a time before computers and word processors. There really was. It was called BC. And what we used to do was to have a book and we'd write on it like this. And because I was born BC, I still write in exercise books like this. So what I would do would be to sit and write at a desk, leaning forward, as you do, writing like that. And because when I, I get very excited when I write, I get, everything gets very tense, particularly if it's going very, very well. And my elbow would seize up, my shoulder would seize up. And I found it really painful. My fingers and things, all sorts of nasty things were happening to all my tendons and muscle. And I went to a good friend of mine, also a writer, a man called Ted Hughes, a very well-known poet who wrote The Iron Man. And I said, what do you do? What do you do? And he said, well, I had that problem too. When I was younger, I stopped doing that. I said, well, what do you do then? He said, well, I stand up at a lectern. And I write like that by hand. So I got a lectern. And I stood there, and, I, and then my feet hurt. So that was no good. And then I read a book about my great writing heroes, a man called Robert Louis Stevenson. And there's a photograph of him in Samoa, which is where he lived and finally died. And he was on a bed, sitting on a bed with pillows piled up behind him, and his legs drawn up in front of him, and an exercise book resting on his knees. And he was just writing away, really relaxed. So I thought, yeah, the guy who wrote Treasure Island can do that, I'll do that. So I sat down, and what I realised was if you get comfortable, and, you're, and particularly your arms are rested, and you can write like that, there's no pressure, it's brilliant. So that's what I do. I used to do it on my bed at home, actually in the house, and then my wife decided that was disgusting because I would never take my shoes off the bed, and because ink used to get on the sheets, etc., etc. So now I've got a little place, we call it the tea house in the garden, where I also lie on a bed and write, but I'm away from everyone else. No phones, um, nothing, just me and the story inside my head and a bed. 
my own favourite. I think I will tell you hand on heart what is the real truth. Um, and that is that, that my favourite is always the one that I've just finished. Because that is the one that's still buzzing around your head and that you can't leave alone, that you dream about, and that you have lots of hope for. Uh, every book is a bit, it's a bit like, a, like a hope. Uh, you do it in faith, and the book comes out, and you hope people will like it. You can't arrange it, you have to hope it. Um, and it's that really, I suppose, that makes, at the present moment, Running Wild, my, my favourite book. But ask me next year, and it'll be another one.